Hi everybody, my name is Steve Houston. You already know that you've been to this channel before. Listen, it's been about a week or so. Been very, very busy watching all the lockdowns going on across the country again. They're just beginning to roll out state by state. I want everybody to know this. Look, we've been we've been through this before. Uh, we are considered an essential business, so stay strong. Don't change anything. Continue to book appointments face to face, virtual. Uh, you know, I've always felt like it's not one thing or the other thing. It's a combination of things. More important is meeting your clients uh, where they feel most comfortable. And many of us will get through this uh, this year as insurance agents, mortgage session, final expense, life insurance agents, successful and actually see an increase in our income. So stay strong, stay steady. Uh, and that's just what I mentioned. I want to get out to you real quick before we launch into this video. Uh, it is uh, November. Uh, of 2020 and I want to talk about today about setting appointments by the way listen uh, if you just stumbled across the channel we talk about all things financial services here we talk about those IMOs those recruit 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 don't get those three things out of order uh, IMOs all the time on here I truly believe that for you to be successful it's not just about the IMO it's also about the person you're partnering with and it should be a true partnership it should not be a sign up and you know go 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 kind of a situation or relationship we partner with our agents here uh, at our agency and we really invest uh, in their success which you should uh, if you're in the business of, of building an agency and by compensation getting paid uh, to mentor and coach those folks not just sign them up that's a one-time conversation kind of like throwing things on a wall and see what sticks i despise that it's not what we do here uh, so look around have some conversations, interview the interviewee. But again, I don't want to get too far down that road, but that's what this channel is all about. If you see value in the videos that we have here, there's a lot of different playlists. Uh, give me a thumbs up. It's all about thumbs up, as YouTube says. It allows us to get the message out to more agents that are struggling, that it has that lack of support, has no leads or poor leads, and no training, no technology, nothing that you really need to succeed in this business. And that's what you need because you should be in the business and you should be allowed to have a fighting chance to succeed. As long as you want to do the work, you're coachable and you have a huge desire to succeed, to be independent, to not be in a situation like we're in right now where you may lose your job or you lose your industry or lose your business because some knucklehead decide it's time to shut the economy down and to tell you what you can do with your privately owned business. Totally against that, uh, regardless of what side of the political fence you fall on. I believe this is a free country, and as such, we shouldn't be told we had to shut down our business and our livelihood and go stand in food lines. Aside from that, we welcome to the channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment uh, in the comment section. Uh, my number and my email address is in there as well. You can always reach out to me, and we can have that conversation. But, okay, so the purpose of this video is setting appointments, which I believe is the number one skill that we have in this industry. It's not product knowledge. As long as you're working with a coach or mentor that can help you get prepared by choosing the right products, getting prepared to do an in-home presentation, really it's all about you know getting some leads, booking some appointments, and getting in the home is the number one skill. Because if you can't get some leads and convert those leads into appointments, you're not gonna, product knowledge means nothing because you're never gonna get in front of a client. That's why we spend so much time with our agents role playing and working with them on the phone script, tone, tempo, how to handle objections because again that is that first four to six weeks of their training which is key to their success. So again remember the purpose of dialing is simply to book an appointment. It is not you've got to take that insurance agent hat off and put on the board appointment center at the front office for that dentist. You know, you all get those calls just like I do where they're just going through the motions. They're booking the, the dentist's counter up. If you ask them how to do a, you know, what was a surgical procedure for a root canal, they wouldn't know. Just like if somebody asks you, well, what do I qualify for? You shouldn't know. Remember, the goal is to book an appointment and then go do your due diligence and go out there and visit those folks, sit down and discuss their options. So look, you gotta practice, you gotta drill, you gotta rehearse the objections and the rebuttals until you can respond to all objections without thinking and with a smooth transition, right? And having these rebuttals down is important. However, it's not as important as understanding why you're saying what you're saying and understanding who you are in this client or prospect 
slash agent relationship. It's so very true. The goal is not to build a relationship on the phone or cover information on the phone with that client, but it's to posture and position yourself as the professional that has something that they want, which is protection and peace of mind for their families. You, again, I, I work with this on my agents as well. What we do matters and you are doing them a favor by going out there and discussing with them how to put this protection in place for their family because somebody's going to die on your watch. And again, they're going to be grateful that you had the persistency in your business to reach out to them and book that appointment because somebody's life is going to be changed as a result of you going out there and doing what you know how to do, which is to give them their options and put that coverage in place, right? It could be the difference between not just keeping the home, but it could be the difference between those kids going to college, you know, having to get in that college education, uh, you know, obviously keeping the home, but also paying bills and, you know, that security could be because you did your job. So remember, you're doing them a favor by going out there and sitting down with them, but be a professional and going out there and sharing with their options. And remember that, you know, what we do matters and it's a very, very important thing that we do do for families, okay? And the reason why I spend so much time on that is you have to first yourself get in this state of mind that they are the patient and you're the doctor. Here's an important distinction. And I mentioned it briefly before. You are not there to sell them something. You are there to help them with what they're asking for, right? Many see objections as a negative, right? So try this. When given an objection, think they must need more clarification. It's not that they don't want it or they don't trust you. Or they, now, mind you, people do buy from people they like, know, and trust, which means you can't just go in the house and drop rates. You've got to spend time in that bonding, getting to know them, getting them to like you, know you more, and trust you before they're ever going to buy from you. So that being aside, understand that if they present an objection, they just need more clarification. And if you're an agent in this business, your mindset should be, that they need it, right? If you're watching this video and you're in this business, your mindset better be that everyone needs what we have to offer, right? I mean, think about it. Who's, I ask my agents this all the time, who sends in a request for protection and is not interested? Right? They send a request in. It took some time, whether it's on the internet or whether it's be a direct mail piece or a postcard or they call back into an IVR system. They took the time because they had an interest. Who requests information on something that they're not interested in hearing more about? So you have to go back to that when you're dealing with these objections and understand that at some point they were clearly, obviously, interested, right? So when they ask something, they are simply asking for more clarification on the process to get to their desired goal, which is protection for their family, right? You as an agent should be in control, right? They fill out a request, they raise their hand, they send in that form, they fill out a form on the internet, desiring and needing the service you're providing. At least they were interested. So remember, when you're handling objections, here's the technique that I use. Always answer a question with another question. My mentor told me years ago, whoever asks the most questions wins. And because they're in need of what you have to offer, it only makes sense for you to stay in control and to provide the structure of the conversation with a question. Remember, when setting appointments, the key question to ask is the closing question, right? What are we doing on the phone? What, are, what is our goal? Our goal is not to sell insurance on the phone. Our goal is not to provide information on the phone. It is not to tell them what they qualify on the phone. It is not to make a friend or a buddy on the phone right? It is not to bond on the phone. The goal is to book the appointment. So the closing question always is, what time is better for you, Jack or Jill? 9 a.m. or 4.30 p.m. on Monday? This is also a yes, yes question. Never ask a yes, no question. You'll end up with a maybe. So if you're taking notes, there's some key words that you should be writing down. One is, I like to use perfect. Regardless of what they say, it's perfect or great, whichever one works best for you. These words are what I call relating words. Whatever they say, it's always perfect or great, right? People are used to those. It's an acknowledgement to their answer or question. And using your rebuttal to the objection, you want to drive them back to the appointment and then lock it down. Not to have a conversation with them. The more you talk, 
you're going to talk yourself right out of a potential appointment. Listen or look is a word I use. It is to force your prospects to focus. Since these words mean you're going to say something that's important, so lean in and listen. Look, see there? <laughs> see there? It happened. When I said listen or look, you lean in. Now, there are some key phrases to use to show that you're busy and a ton of people are wanting to see you, such as, I don't have a lot of time. I can put you down between appointments. I will have 15 appointments tomorrow, so I only ask that you be there because I'm not going to have a lot of time and then lock that appointment down. I'm a field underwriter, not a sales rep. I have to verify that you are who you are and alive and breathing. I love this one. I use this a lot when they say, hey, you can just mail me the quote. I say, hey, Jack, I'd love to be able to do that. Trust me. It saved me a lot of time. But it's either me or it's a nurse. And I'm sure you'd rather see me, right, Jack? And it usually works 99% of the time. Here's another one. I know how important this is to you and your family. So my earliest time is Tuesday, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Will you and Jill be at home? So as we close this video out, it's very important to set yourself up for success with some action steps. Now here those are. Massive activity. The more you get objections, the better you will become. So embrace the objections because that means that you're learning, right? The better you are handling objections, the better you are going to be booking appointments and the more money you're going to make. Make sure your mind is in the right place. Remember, your goal is to set appointments. You are the doctor and they are the patient. Read your affirmations aloud, declaring that you are the pro here, right? Practice, drill, and rehearse. And here's another one I love. Create an objection board with a mirror to place right in front of your phone. So you can make sure you're smiling all the time and that translates over the phone. Here's an example of how I handle the number one objection. Say, Steve. Then thank you, I've already got it taken care of. Perfect. Now, Jack, most families send back multiple requests to look at different options, compare, and make sure that they have the best plan for their family. Is it fair to assume, Jack, you did the same thing? Yes. Okay, great. What I will do is get the information and the options out to you that you haven't received yet so you can do what you originally wanted to do, which was compare. Now, we are running behind due to the COVID-19, so I won't have a lot of time. I'm going to have about 10, 15 minutes, and I can put you down between appointments. I have either 9 a.m. or 4 p.m. Which one of these work better for you and Jill? Okay, and because of our schedule, I will have about 50 appointments that day. Can you give me a window of about 30 to 45 minutes in case I'm running a little bit late? Great. And Jack, the only thing I ask and expect because of our schedule is that you definitely make sure that you're going to be there. Is that fair? Perfect. I look forward to meeting you and Jill and helping you find the protection for your family. And that's the way I handle the number one objection that we get on the telephone, which is, I've already got it taken care of, which 99.9% .9 of the time is not true. It's the best objection they can come up with to put you off. Just like when you walk into a store, you go into a car lot, and they go, can I help you? No, just looking. <laughs> Same thing. So understand that and drive for the appointment. Now, on my board behind me, as we close this video out, I've got some what I call some non-negotiables that we do on my team when it comes to booking appointments, which is never answer blocked or unknown phone numbers. Okay? It amazes me I make people, they'll answer the phone after booking an appointment from a block number or even from a number they don't recognize but happens to be the appointment that they set two days ago and now they want to cancel. I don't use my cell phone, which is on the board, never use a cell phone, to book appointments for that very reason. And the reason is, once I book the appointment, I'm going. I don't care they call, sick, dog run over by a car, and it doesn't matter. I'm going because I've already set other appointments in the area as well. I'm going to knock on the door. And if I get to the door and they go, well, Steve, I, I called you and tried to reschedule or cancel. And I'm going, I'm sorry, Jill. I don't get my messages when I'm out in the field. So I was unaware that you called, but I'm here now. It only takes me about 10 or 15 minutes. And you'll get 50% of those people to allow you in the house. And you'll close 50% more business as a result of this one-time 
tested and proven skill, which is never answer the phone after you book an appointment. Never confirm appointments, okay? So here's the list. Never answer block or unknown numbers. Never reschedule. Go anyway. Never use a cell phone. Go anyway. The reason why you don't use a cell phone is if they call your cell phone and you had a cell phone with you on your appointment, you can't honestly and ethically say, I don't get my messages in the field. So get yourself a Ring Central, a Google Voice, whatever it is, phone number to use for your business. You're in business here. There will be expenses. Not much, but there will be expenses. Open your own business. Okay? Never leave voicemails. All you're doing is identifying yourself and the number you're calling from, and they're going to block it. Don't use leave a voicemail. Always double and triple dial. What does, that, what does that mean? It means I'm going to dial, get voicemail, hang up, dial again, get voicemail, hang up, dial again. Think about it. When someone calls you nonstop in a row, you think it's an emergency, and the answer rate goes through the roof. So always double, triple dial your leads. And lastly, never confirm appointments. All you're doing is putting yourself in a situation that they'll either cancel, reschedule, or rethink, and you'll have to resell the appointment. Don't put yourself in that situation. Lastly, always go. Always go. Look, you shouldn't have just one appointment for the evening anyway, so you should have multiple appointments in that area. And it's be sitting at home watching TV anyways, or whatever else you would be doing. Be open for business, right? Do whatever it takes for as long as it takes, no matter what, and always go on your appointments. Okay? And if you're in the area, and if they truly aren't available or won't allow you to come in the house or, you know, whatever it is, okay, the dog's sick, whatever, you should have a stack of leads with you in the car, the ones that didn't answer the phone, and drive to those appointments and knock on the door and say, hey, my name is Steve Houston. I'm the agent in your area that was assigned to your case. I've been trying to get you on the phone. I'm here. Thought me I'd come by and set an appointment with you. Whatever it is. You're always going to be able to do something with your time in the event. You can even pull over in a parking lot, pick up the leads, and see if you can book an appointment for right then and there. Always go. It's not about necessarily the business that you're going to gain by doing that. It's about the mindset that you're telling yourself about the fact that I am in this business to win. And I'm going to go always, no matter what. I'm going to do 100% of my efforts to succeed in this business. I am not going to allow myself to buy into excuses. I'm always going to show up because if you always show up, you will win here in this business and you'll change your financial future forever. Don't forget the thumbs up. If you get some value out of it, take care and I'll see you on the next video. Bye now.